Hello and welcome to another update about uh, Solana. Yeah, Solana, not much movement, but I still do a quick update for the Solana fans here on this channel. Yeah, with Solana, we saw yesterday that we were hovering around 100, 101 dollars. What do you see now? We're still around in the same place. So yesterday you saw this kind of doji candle here, daily doji candle, um, which just indicates that, yeah, the bulls and the bears don't know what's going on. So it might be hard to see, but you can see this is a very, very clear indecision candle where you pretty much have a very, very small candle body, which means that the candle close, which was pretty much very, very close to the um, opening price of the candle. Yeah, so the price has hardly moved. And you can see that obviously on the price. Um, you can see also there was a bit of volatility during the day, the price moved up, the price moved down. Yeah, uh, down and up Yeah, between $98 and $103. But then the price went back all the way to the beginning of the um, the opening price, basically of the of the of the day. So indecision and that just signals what is going on in the market at the moment, even the buyers and the sellers don't know, they are, have the same strengths, basically. And that indicates everything, but it does indicate what that we are not in a bull run, yeah, <laughs> that we are not in a bull run. Otherwise, it would just keep going. We are very, very corrective at the moment. Um, and you can see we had on the chart here this ascending broadening wedge, generally a bearish pattern, different ways of drawing it. I could even move that down a little bit. Doesn't really make a difference. The, the thing is down here that we have various touch points here. One, one is here on the daily, by the way. One, because on the other time frames you don't really see it very well because it became a bit messy back here. But you can see how we had a touch point here. Oops, touch point here. And touch point here. And touch point here, of course, yeah. And touch point here. So we had here our five touch points on that daily, um, no, on the ascending broadening wedge. And we have broken out of it for the first time here on the 22nd of April and now closed that outside of the channel or outside of the wedge, closed this one out of the wedge and today we're also below it. So you could see it in a way that, right, we came out of it, found obviously support here at the $100 level, the psychological level. Then we had that indecision candle uh, where the buyers and sellers didn't know what, what's going on. And now today we're moving here a little bit higher and possibly we are retesting that um, descending broadening wedge from below. So generally a quite bearish, quite a bearish pattern, quite a bearish move actually. Um, yesterday we tried to get back in there, made actually only a lower high. So again, that is not bullish because what you did in the end, you made here a lower low and you've now also made a lower high. Now, if you combine them like that, that again looks like a small ascending, a descending broadening wedge, which would again be a bullish pattern. But um, we only have two touch points, so it's not that meaningful. So we need to wait a little bit um, how that's turning out. But what is not bullish is a lower low and a lower high, okay? But what you need to understand, we are currently holding support above the 61.8% Fibonacci level. That is a very, very important support level. It is the most relevant Fibonacci level. And therefore, the price doesn't really know where to go. It's sort of stick, it's stuck between this ascending broadening wedge and the, um, yeah, the $100 level. So I also can't tell you what's going on now, but what I can tell you is that below $100, we should see quite a significant decline, possibly, however, with the first support being at $95. And if we break back above this um, wedge or in that wedge, I think really upside will only be possible as soon as we break above the wedge, really. So not only into it, but really out of it on the upside. And that would be a move above 111 US dollars. So until then, everything's really possible because we at the moment just in a sideways range and we're not really moving here too much. Okay. Um, looking at the higher level picture, what, what is Solana doing here? Any sort of um, insights? And I think what, what could happen here, and that is actually my, my expectation that we're coming down lower, yeah, that in line with Bitcoin, we could really see prices of around 55 US dollars for um, for Solana and we had here our, so this year, this move up was um, a first wave 
We are now, in my opinion, in a second wave, as so many other cryptos are as well um, at the moment. So the second wave is a corrective wave consisting of three waves. You can see it here in, in white, A, B, C. And within this A, B, C, again, you've got um, an A wave consists of five waves here, very small, a B wave of three waves, very small, and a um, C wave, again, of five waves. And what we could have seen here is that five wave move one, two, three, that wave four played out then, and that we might actually now be in a um, in a fifth wave, okay? That is absolutely possible that we're now in a fifth wave down, um, which takes a bit of time. Yeah, that is possible. Um, the other possibility, yeah, is that the four should be here. Um, and that, yeah, this is pretty much my, my key expectation at the moment. There was a possible breakout scenario here. That's not fully invalidated yet, but it's getting much, much, much less likely with how, what's going on how the price action is playing out for Solana and for other cryptocurrencies as well. So of course it's possible to go up from here, but the likelihood is just low looking at the price action, looking at how the waves are performing. And I explained that in previous videos in detail because we came down very impulsively and the way we are coming up now, because we are going up a little bit or we did go up a little bit after we made that low here at $95. It is just corrective. We're coming down nearly to the same level again and the characteristic is just not what you would want to see now in a possible breakout scenario. So the fifth wave could be could be somewhere down here. That would actually be the ideal target for the current correction. That 55 US dollar level that is the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement level. A lot of cryptocurrencies have reached it already. Solana hasn't. What is also possible is in a really, really bearish environment to even drop down to 30 US dollars. And someone said, I apparently have in the description still um, the um, description that we can see a, a 10x. And a 10x, yeah, not from now, because that would be a $1,000. Um, Solana, no, a 10x from when the correction is finished. And the 10x could be um, from that ideal retracement. So five, 55 US dollars could lead to a 550 US dollar um, Solana. That is not unrealistic. That is not um, crazy. So the way we could see that is that when we start here, that take the FIP extensions, I showed you that before, and it depends on where the price is gonna land, right? But let's say we, we land here at $55 and we take the Fibonacci extension, then um, depending on where, where we land, as I said, but then the, the target for the next wave, and that would be a third wave, would take it to one, to 480 US dollars at least. That is the absolute minimum. That is the minimum target for a wave three. And that will happen. What I can't tell you is when exactly. The reason is, so the thing is, we've had a wave one play out here. Now that played out over four or five months, okay? We're now in a wave two that also played out over yeah, four or five months. So when we now get a wave three, that is normally the most bullish, the most impulsive wave. Um, so we won't get it before the correction is finished, but as soon as the correction is finished, let's say at $55, yeah, or maybe even at 30, and then I suppose the 10X is easier. So when you turn around here, um, then this can play out over three months. Yeah, we, we've seen bull runs play out over, over two months, three months. So they're actually a very short period where the price is really rallying up, yeah. And with the wave three, I mean, it's something like that here, where you go really, really bullish. The wave three is oftentimes the bullish, the most bullish wave. And here you can actually see it looking at the last impulse of Solana, the last major impulse where you moved from that wave two to that wave three, really, really bullish, really parabolic, really. Um, and therefore this can happen, of course, again, that will happen again. The thing is, I can't tell you if that happens in 2022, it's still possible. Absolutely, we are only in May. Um, in 2021, we've also seen a dip in May, uh, we in April, I mean, but in, in also in um, last year, we've seen dip in May. And many cryptos made a, a all-time high by October, November, right? Um, maybe even earlier, like for example, Cardano. So of course it's possible, not impossible. And the, the message here is 10X is possible for Solana because that is the minimum target for the next wave that is not drawn out of the air. This is by just using the Elliott Wave um, method targets and the Fibonacci extension for a third wave. Okay, so hopefully you liked the update. Um, if you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. 
And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.